I'm Jay Horton. I make movies that make money, and this is Filmmakers On. Today, I'm talking with Cleveland, Ohio filmmaking mainstay Johnny K. Wu. He's produced or directed over 30 projects, including several feature films, mostly in the martial arts genre. He's focused primarily on creating high quality material at a low budget, and he excels at online marketing and networking. Let's do the interview thing. Have you enjoyed uh, Hot House yet? Um, yes, but I like I'm still I haven't really I haven't I, I've mostly just listened so far. I, I haven't found uh, like it seems like any time I get on, it's like the, the cool groups aren't going on. <laughs> yeah, but there, there's a lot of uh, different in, uh, independent film groups there. And it was crazy. I mean, yesterday I spent the whole day there. Today I'm talking with filmmaker Johnny K. Wu. Uh, he's been making movies for over 20 years now, um, including the upcoming Uling The Society. Um, how you doing, Johnny? Pretty good. Thank you for the invite, Jason. Oh yeah, it's really nice having you here. So let's uh, let's kind of start at the end and we'll kind of move back. Sure. Um, so you've been making movies a, like a long time. What what's been the biggest change in marketing your movies? Um, the biggest change is um, now you had to be more uh, aggressive than you used to be. Just because back in the uh, when I started in 1998, there's not a lot of uh, competitors in, in anywhere, just because we are still filming with film uh, cameras. So that was the almost the end part of the year when the, the digital uh, got into the, become big. When you make a movie back then with a film camera or any other uh, high quality digital cameras, you immediately get, get accepted to film festival, you immediately get, get people get excited about it. But now we have to compete against everybody. Every person I know got a camera. Everybody I know have a, uh, have been doing film stuff. So it's like, okay, so I need to get above them and try to do something different. And so marketing has become much more difficult and concerned, even though uh, we do have the technology. We have more uh, social media than before, but there is a, a, a vast majority of people making the same type of genre project than I do. So I had to compete against them, try to get myself ahead of them which is much more complicated. And you've mostly been in the martial arts genre, correct? Yes. Um, so what, when you were starting out, like, a, like what, was the, what was distribution like back then? Were you DIYing or were you going traditional? I went with a sales agent. Um, his name is Phil Gore. Phil Gore. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a great guy. He actually came from the Midwest, so he actually understands filmmaker. He's a filmmaker himself. And back then, the reason why I, joined, I, I signed up with him because he saw one of my short films, The Joker's Card. It's a DC parody, parody uh, comedy film. And he loves it so much, so he wanted to represent it. He also told me that potentially you won't be able to get any distribution because it's a, it's a copyrighted parody film. I said, no problem. And because the movie got really, really big back then uh, in 2003, and have, uh, have, we actually crashed a server that we premiered it on, so, which <laughs> is kind of a cool thing. Back then. That is. <laughs> but so when he represented that, he said, well, you know what? Why don't you make me a feature film and let me represent it and let's see how far we can go with it. So we made, we made a um, sort, of, so, sort, of, sort of a sequel of a Joker's card without naming any DC characters. Mm. So we make it more our own character. We have a guy with a wing. We have a guy with a tail. We have the same main actor from the a Joker's card playing back again, the same character, but mm. without using last name, just his first name only base. Right. So we made this sci-fi feature film and he loves it so much. It got it represented and dis distributed worldwide. So it was, uh, it was fun. How has uh, distribution changed for you since then? Like how, how do you attack it now? Atta uh, now it's a little bit different just because uh, the one before the Ulinda Society and the one I'm currently working on, uh, it's, um, it's called Usha or Immortal Combat. It was actually distributed as Immortal Combat, the code. And mm -hmm. we decided uh, to go with a traditional distributor just because I want to see how different it is from the sales agent I had before. It is a totally different world in the sense of the, for example, the sales agent take it to different film market. He doesn't charge any money until my movie gets sold. And when the movie gets sold, he, he takes 50% per, per territory, I get the other 50%. That's including the marketing cap already part of the 50%. Mm -hmm. And so the contract is only a year. So if I don't like it, I can cancel him, go move on with someone else. With a distributor, I have a whole 22 pages of <laughs> agreement. I had to read through it. 
there's a marketing expense. There's a seven to 15 years of licensee that he writes with them. So mm-hmm. uh, lots of different things I had to learn from. And so that part is a, a little bit new. And also understanding that a lot of these distributors, they tend to uh, become a little bit more difficult in the sense of they don't pay you because they had to recoup their money first. So you probably never see your money until three, four years later. So I had to go through the whole process. So in, in learning the process of distribution. Now with the uh, the new movie, Uling, I'm considering either go back to my first sales agent because I see money coming quicker mm-hmm. or go with uh, a distributor again uh, or just do it myself. I haven't figured out the, the decision yet because there's already two distributors and one sales agent re- reaching out to me already because of the trailer. So I just want to see which one will give you the best benefit. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of choices now and a lot of filmmakers doing, you know, a hybrid of the two, you know, they'll keep some rights like DVD and they'll kind of do that themselves. Maybe do give streaming to the distributor. I've seen stuff like that. Exactly. So we were actually, we connected online a little bit ago. We were talking about marketing stuff and uh, you were talking about a clubhouse. Uh, Can you tell me uh, like how you got into that and like uh, how you find it a good tool for filmmakers? Sure. So Clubhouse was uh, created in back, back in March 2020. So it's just almost a year old now. And they originally created this as a, a interactive podcast. It's the best, quickest way to say it. Basically speaking, you use your audio, connect with each other uh, Go to when you go to different rooms. So you go to lunch area, you have different options, uh, all the different rooms you can join. You join the room and you listen. And if you feel like you want to comment, you press the hand icon to raise your hand. So one of the moderator will bring you in and then you just talk to them and, and tell you your, your, your ideas, your comments, your questions. And after that, you turn your microphone off so you can listen to the rest of people. So almost basically speaking, a, an interactive uh, podcast where everybody can join in the room. Um, the idea was really, really phenomenal because we, I'm tired of typing on Facebook every time there's a question. Because I mean, <laughs> you and I, you, we both are almost in every filmmaking groups, user groups, they're on Facebook. I, I know for a fact I was in over 500 different ones. Yeah. So typing all the time, it's tiresome. So mm-hmm. be able to talk through it, it's actually very engaging because now people can hear my voice and hear my, 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 my crooked accent and I can <laughs> hear their voice and actually they can actually understand, hear how excited, passionate or angry I can become without just using the cap and then say, you stupid, you know, like something like that on <laughs> Facebook. Right. So it was, it was great. And what I like about it, because when they first started the clubhouse, they actually invited different influencers and in Hollywood name people involved. So they were mm-hmm. the first invitation went out. And now they uh, send invitation to, to people who use iPhone, but you had to be invited to join in. So each user can get up to three different invites to bring somebody in, the more you get involved. And right. why it helps me now is, uh, I joined in December 25th, and as, as of now, I have gained um, 500 something followers on Clubhouse and over 400 followers on Instagram. Oh, wow. And that was in a pretty short period of time, too. Right? Exactly. Just yeah. Because I also don't sit back and listen, I just go in and join. The more you talk, the more chance that people follow you and follow the, the things you say. So that's, that's how the communication goes. And because of that, also, I met a lot of tal- uh, wonderful people. Um, people that I didn't know, they, they were so um, humble to be able to help me and guide me through the whole process. I mean, in mm-hmm. Facebook, you suddenly get a lot of people get very snotty with you because you ask a question yes. about, so how could I turn the camera on? If you ask a question like that, you can have other people help you. The other 50% of people can throw you out to the, the walls, right? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. how about somehow to be better than that in, in, in current state? Uh, but they are thinking about releasing Clubhouse to the general public in two weeks which mm. I have a feeling that it will, be, will be eventually become like a Facebook. Yeah. So the more we take advantage of it now, before you right actually now. go to public, yes. The more chances we have there. I actually connected with people who does uh, virtual uh, events or uh, live events. They actually gave me a lot of insight and actually doing some, open, hopefully doing some business with them. I get other filmmakers, one that they help helps. And so helping them out too. And then mm-hmm. we have attorneys that, that needed some guidance. I, you know, these are back and forth. A lot, a lot of 
interaction and, and, and socializing and networking. Yeah, it, it, it is really cool. So I, I haven't been on it a lot. I was just, I was mostly listening, but uh, there was a 80 hour, I, it might even still be going on, uh, social media, uh, uh, cl- uh, what do they call them, clubs or rooms? Yes, rooms, social rooms. media rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they've been and- going up. It was amazing. There were filmmakers. I think you. I think you might have brought it up to me. <laughs> I yeah, remember yeah. checking. No, it yeah, out. definitely. You know, the more you join, and the, especially with the more you talk, the more chances you have to get lots of followers. And there's yeah. another thing I learned. I mean, on those, uh, one of the social media marketing group that talk about how uh, Clubhouse was like was how Twitter used to be. When Twitter started, it, it was everybody go excited about it, everybody going there. There was a mm-hmm. lot of communication going in. And then now, you know, how, how Twitter looks now, it's just become a little bit more uh, uh, step out and to talk, uh, scream like hell about your, your, you know, like a platform for you to, to, to talk. Yeah, to talk, still, to talk at people instead of talking with people. Exactly, exactly. But now Clubhouse still, you can talk with each other. So we are still in a in good grace. You've been making movies pretty much uh, based out of Cleveland for your whole career. Um, w- um, did, was it a conscious decision to like stay out of Hollywood, to stay out of the system? I was in Hollywood for a year and a half, uh, back and forth. Every other week, I would just go there uh, mm-hmm. because of a project I was working here for, for a couple of people here in Cleveland. They fly me there and put me in a very fancy hotel um, <laughs> and because the job was to, to work with celebrities in LA. So you got to have it look like uh, important person. So they had to put you in a very classy hotel. Right. So while I was there, I get to meet with a whole lot of different publicists, PMKs, Lee Salters, uh, 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 publicists, and a couple other people, uh, organizations, and get to learn their insight about how they promote and such. The funny part of it is when we were working with Lee Salters, all the press release that they wrote for us was written by me. They just modified the words a little bit and push it out there. I'm like, seriously, I'm doing your work. <laughs> money for it. Uh, but uh, because of that, um, I was almost going to stay there. Almost, almost, because I was, I was spending about $3,000 a month here. All, all my expenses, rent, everything else. I was like, with the same amount of money I spent here, I might be, I can probably be able to easily do, spend the same money over there in LA. Mm. So, but before I get there, I, then I realized uh, Cleveland, I became a big fish in the pond, in a small pond. So opportunity is still there for me. And we started put together the Cleveland Asian Festival, which I co-found. With uh, now we got about fifty thousand people on a, doing a weekend to attend. So all this is uh, making me force, f- making me decide that well, I probably stay here more because I have more opportunity here that I haven't finished topic yet. And, and you're pretty much you're 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 making your own opportunities, like you're you're yes. you're building these things up from scratch, correct? Right, right. And that's what I also like to do when I make a movie. I always try to find a way to challenge myself a little bit better. So every move I do had to be much more complicated or much more interesting than the one before, because otherwise I'm not learning. Right. Uh, can you give an example? A very good example would be this. Um, the one before the Wulinda Society, I, I want to shoot everything on the winter time because I love winter, which mm-hmm. is kind of weird. And all that castle crew always hate me for that. So we have snow and then <laughs> we, we want to make sure how we can shoot outdoor in, in 20 degrees or 15 degrees weather with snow. Mm-hmm. So that's a good challenge. So that'll make it much more interesting. For this one, my my cast complained about cold. So we had to create things differently. So with the one before uh, Immortal Combat, we actually create our own rain scene. And I want I wanted to replicate that this this one for this movie. And they say, no, it's too cold because it's we're filming that in December. So I'm like, okay, fine, let's make it a snowstorm. So we created fake snow because again, they're cold, they don't want to feel calm. I don't want to feel them to feel uncomfortable in the very, very cold weather at mm-hmm. nighttime. So we had to we brought in a bunch of different fake snow and a snow machine and just make the whole area look like there's real snow. <laughs> so that's a lot of challenge because then also, and we, and always good because that would make it much more interesting. And for this one, I wanted to get wire work because I've done wire work before, uh, but always in a very controlled environment. This time the environment is outdoor. So it's, it's much more complicated. Mm-hmm. So we pull it off of one location, but we couldn't do it the other. So I had to scratch the whole idea just because when you have wire work and we don't have the machine to do all the wire, we need to have pulleys. Pulleys per person, you need four to five people to pull a person. So mm-hmm. that's complicated things. When we, we usually have uh, 50 to 60 different cast and crew at one day shoot. Wow. And especially when doing the pandemic last year, when we filmed Wuling, 
Uh, that's the reason why we, we decided to have masks in front of the cast, in front of the camera, so they had to wear masks throughout because we, we recognize there's so many cast and crew involved in one project. We wanna make mm -hmm. sure everybody's safe. So yeah. we, uh, we <coughs> employed to having masks in front of the camera, a part of the story, and make it more futuristic like before immoral karma happened. Mm. And surprisingly and, um, and luckily speaking, and you know, knocking on woods, that we did not have anybody get sick of COVID. Nobody uh, contracted COVID in my set. And we had 13 day shoot date and all finished. Nobody got sick. Yet I have heard so many other smaller scale feature film shoot that after they finished, people got sick. So yeah. we did our best to, to make sure uh, our set is the most, it, it can be said, my set is the most safe, safest set uh, filming here in Ohio. Which is, which is funny too, because you're, you're doing all these action movies, you know, with these big set pieces and, you know, fights and that that's really cool. And I guess it's a lot of it has to do with your background in martial arts. Do you have a stunt coordinator that you bring on for these things? I have well? a fight choreographer I bring in and I did bring in, brought in a friend of mine who was also a stunt coordinator for certain scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a medic on board. Every time we have a fight sequences, uh, we should, we usually, um, I love to shoot everything with three to four cameras at a, at a time. So even yep. for the dialogue scenes, everything. So we can, we managed to pull it off to have 13 days instead of 20 days of filming. And even though when we, we did a schedule for this one, it was very easy. <clears throat> we block off about 30 days of shoot dates. We actually have different dates on the weekend we want to shoot. And then we let the actors and cast know these other dates. And then we tell them that, make sure you open these dates up for them. You know, whatever dates that you're available, let us know. So we schedule that way. And then when we shoot it, we actually have uh, like say a Saturday for the full day shoot, uh, six to eight, eight hours. We never go over 10 hours. That's actually surprising. I didn't even expect that. And then we have Sunday, we use as a backup day in case we had to do a pickup shoot and whatsoever. Somehow we managed to get everything done on Saturday and never had to come back to Sunday. So mm -hmm. at, the, at the three months that we'd be filming on weekends only, we only spend 13 days actually filming. Wow, that's a pretty tight schedule for that. Yeah. And I was uh, I was just watching the trailer and I noticed it was uh, anamorphic. Um, was that your first anamorphic feature, or had yep. you done? Well, oh, we cool. bought we bought the lens, uh, we bought the serial lenses, and then we said, like, well, you know what? Let's challenge it. Let's play with anamorphic. Kind of see how good this, how cool this could be. Mm -hmm. uh, it came out really good. Uh, I was very happy with the result. Um, what What was the biggest challenge in working with anamorphic for you? The, the, the crew, the, I just showed them about how to make it work. So this is also the probably the first time we actually use Black Magic Packet 4K cameras. So <laughs> we do not know the in and out of the cameras. And we just went in, went to it and then learning by making mistake and then getting better. So like mm -hmm. for the first day to shoot, we didn't cut properly color, color, correct, uh, color profile set for the mm. two cameras that we're using. So the color came completely off. So now we learn how what to do better. Then we also know, learn about uh, when you're shooting in a, in, a, in a room without lights, you need to use the second layer of the dual ISO um, settings to do it. We didn't know mm -hmm. that. We used the first, la first set, set of our ISO numbers and that becomes so dark, so noisy, so horribly that we cannot use it. Yeah. Um, working with the <coughs> anamorphic lens, we need to figure out, remember to always de squeeze on the camera so we can see exactly how we want to see it. And then yeah, so you don't we, have that weird exactly and, the yeah. squeeze and what <clears throat> and then in the post production we had to always remember to de-squeeze also in post so we can get it right i was going to say the first one that i did anamorphic i had a lot of problems in post uh knowing exactly what aspect ratio it was supposed to be you know, yeah because yeah. i've never but done it's, it gets, so. it's getting better now i mean the premiere yeah. of da vinci can actually you know just tell the computer oh i want to de-squeeze for this 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 uh, format it does it automatically so yeah. you really don't have to worry too much. Much easier than back then. But back then you had to do the calculation, you know, yep. just the framing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know in my first pass, I came out uh, like, I don't know, to, uh, like 5% too squeezed. Right. Yeah. But I eventually figured it out. <laughs> the, yep. the, biggest, the biggest problem I, I had on set was, you know, so I'd been shooting movies for almost 20 years, always shooting, you know, 16.9 or 4.3. And you know, I knew intellectually that I was going to have a lot more horizontal frame, but until you actually get inside an interior and right. set it up and see how much is actually visible, I, I, I mean, exactly. It, yeah. Like exactly. we really underestimated the time that it would take to 
dress that much of the set. In, in the middle section of movies, you were working with the sales agent. Were, were you pretty much responsible solely for the marketing? Um, sort of. They are responsible for marketing out the movie when it's available to different uh, vendors. So let's say the, the previous one, Immortal Kombat, or Immortal Kombat the Code, uh, when they have it on DVD on different places, they push it out there. But it was easier for me because I belong to 500 user groups on Facebook. I just had to copy, I came to copy the whole list of, okay, you can get a display, 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 display. You can buy here, you can rent here. I just post it out there on all the places. And it, somehow it works just because the movie was released on September 1st on, on all of the places, all the different VOD and other places. Uh, technically speaking, usually after three months, they shut it down, put it for free, right? On Amazon, for example. It is right. still for rent and uh, to buy currently right now this, at uh, this moment. And when mm -hmm. I talked to uh, the distributor, he said, the movie is doing well in rental and, 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 and streaming. Just seems to seem so be people just keep, keep buying it. Obviously, cop, uh, piracy happened too. So yeah. the more you have on, on streaming, the more piracy comes out. So every day I've been going to YouTube Mm -hmm. and search for my movie and strike down the the piracy for for all the ones and every day i get one or two which is frustrating for me because i don't yeah. know how how good the movie it was but in one uh piracy was channel over thirty five thousand people watching already wow i was like wow. why don't you just go and yeah, write wa it? watch the watch the real one <laughs> yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah so i lost thirty five thousand uh people's money and they were all happened within two days. So I struck it down. And this, here's another funny part. Just because all this uh, piracy channel got, got uh, taken down by, by YouTube, they got pissed at me. So they would go to my trailer and all watch the trailer, gave me really, really bad reviews on the trailer, and gave me a thumbs down. Yep. <laughs> I've seen them swarm people's IMDb's too, like yeah. especially back in the day when they still had the uh, comment section. Well, and now Amazon's owned by, or IMDb is owned by Amazon, so it's like directly connected. So whatever's happened there is going to affect you in the Al exactly. Amazon algorithm. Yeah. I think I'll be okay. fortunate so far because when I go to the uh, Amazon, uh, the reviews still are, are only the ones showing up on Amazon. Oh, that's good. So far. So I'm going to cross my fingers until they, they completely change the whole thing again. Then I'll be frustrated. <laughs> So you were mentioning uh, going into groups and stuff and promoting. Now, uh, what kind of what kind of groups are you promoting in? I know you're making a lot of martial arts type films. So are you going into martial arts groups? Or are you? I go to group? both. Um, I go okay. to the filmmaking groups just to show them what I can do. So potentially mm -hmm. get a chance to get more followers who are to, uh, 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 who are people who love this genre of movies and love mm -hmm. the way I do stuff. I also go to martial groups. Uh, I think that one of the things that you mentioned when your uh, your podcast. Video postcard, you talk about that too. You know, yeah. you have a sci fi movie, you go to sci fi groups, which I do. Yes. <laughs> so I go to Marshall groups and tell them uh, this is the type of movie, or I go to general public group where there's not, there's basically for local people who hang out and chit chat or meet up. I go to the groups and say, hey, you know what? I'm local here too. I'm a filmmaker, I'm an independent filmmaker, and I got this movie just came out. I will hope that you can support us because we don't make any money. <laughs> so. <laughs> And that's how I, I push it out. I haven't done much right now just because being busy with this, this new project. Uh, mm -hmm. But once in a while, like, like during the Thanksgiving time, I will send out to every group, filmmaking group or anybody who wants to hear and any other different group said to them, I got all these free movies on Amazon Prime. And if you got nothing to do Thanksgiving and you want to support independent film, go watch this. So I yeah. list it all and then hopefully they'll, they'll go check it out. Yeah, that sounds good. And it sounds like you're not just, uh, you know, posting your link and say, hey, go watch my movie. You're, you're no. actually like engaging with the audience. Exactly. And I learned, I learned from doing this so many times that when you don't engage, you just post without saying anything else. Uh, it get very, very much almost like a slap in your face. And when I see mm -hmm. something like that for other people, like, why are you trying to tell me? You want me to go check it out? You just, or you want me to, to give you a criticism or you want me to support you? You don't say anything. I'm not going to watch it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. Um, you know, like I, I talk a lot about, you know, not promoting in filmmaking groups. I, I should admit that because you can promote in filmmaking groups, but you just have to relate it to filmmaking, you know, or to right, the filmmakers. Right. Yeah. Right. So I do this, like this trailer, I shared it to the Black Magic Pack and 4K forum. forum. I said to them, hey, this is shot in Black Magic with the uh, anamorphic lens. I go to anamorphic groups, tell them about this so they can, sh they can watch it. Um, usually, 
Usually when I post anything new on YouTube, I will get one dislike immediately. So far, somebody's after you. <laughs> so far, this has been good. This being so far, there's no dislike yet for this trailer, but everything is positive. We uh, released it on Monday and we have about almost 500 views so far. So, so far, so good. Awesome. Uh, what is your, uh, what's the name of your YouTube channel? It's uh, MDI Film. So you basically can go, go to oh. YouTube slash MDI Film. I, I think I'm a subscriber, but okay. if not, if not, I will be. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I just um, use that name because nobody can, it's very different for everybody else. I just use MDI film for everything. So you can find me MDI film on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. It just could be mm-hmm. a consistent name. So are you using uh, Instagram to promote? That's, I have an issue. Um, I have okay. only about, well, I used to have about 12, uh, uh, 1,200 followers, but now I have 1,700 because of thanks to Clubhouse. I haven't nice. figured out how to exactly use Instagram as much I can use for Facebook. Facebook, because I belong to 500 groups and I yeah. administer 20 different uh, the, of those groups, I can easily jump in and do it. But Instagram, yeah. I think the algorithm is a little bit different in the sense of getting followers and such. That part, I haven't 100% figured out the, the, the exact way to do that. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. Like I, I'm, I'm using it, but I don't think I'm, I haven't quite, I'm not getting as much out of it as I, as I could. Yeah. I, I think, I think it's the same thing as Facebook. And I think the reason that you and I do well on Facebook is it's just, that's the one we've spent the most time on exactly. up to this point. Exactly. Yeah. And then, yeah, with Instagram, it's hard, hard to follow everybody and hopefully they follow you back. Um, yeah. There's a bunch of time that you get followers and then a week later they, they don't follow you anymore because they just wanted you to follow them back and then that's it. So right. that's a shady ones, what we call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the follow back thing or follow for follow. You know, I, my, my gut says, it, you know, it feels like, you know, Facebook feels like it's on, you know, kind of the, the back end of its popularity. And, it, you know, Instagram's still coming up a little bit. So, right. like, I, I feel like we probably should spend some more time on there. <laughs> exactly. I think the dialogue's a little bit different because on Facebook, yeah. you can communicate. Instagram, yes, you can only follow and when you send them something on DM, they don't respond back. So yeah, I know I, I, I used to never respond to DMs. I'm, I'm trying to do it more now, trying to be more accessible. Yeah, but, yeah. But I, I have a problem with DM just because everything on the phone. So mm-hmm. typing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. But yeah, um, I, 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 I turn off my notifications. I, I, I just, I, that, that's how I run them. Yeah. But, but I, I feel like, uh, a, a film, a, an old school kind of filmmaking mindset is I'm going to make my movie. I'm going to put the movie out there and, you know, people will enjoy it. And I don't directly communicate with those people. Right. Like okay. I remember back in the day when they had the INDB uh, comment boards oh, yeah. and I would interact with people about my movies exactly. and a lot of people, and a lot of people would say, well, that just makes you look, look cheap or, you know, like low, it makes you, makes you look less than, you know, yeah, like, I remember that too. And back in yeah. the, when we did our feature film, I was going to the INDB uh, message group and chat with people. And people mm-hmm. was like, you know what? You are defending everything you about the movie. So why bother? Because if your movie cannot sell itself by telling the story, right. it, it's not right. So I'm like, oh, okay, shut up now. I'm not going to talk anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then we find out 10 years later, that's what, like, that's what you have to do. Have you tried TikTok yet? I am debating on TikTok just because knowing the company from China owns it still. And oh. I'm afraid of their uh, uh, privacy concern. Okay. Just because uh, there has been a lot of uh, report about information being sold to different places besides just what they want to use it for. Mm-hmm. So I'm keeping that as a still, I opened the account, but I never actually used it yet. So I was worried about that part. Um, I do have WeChat and a WhatsApp account just because I talked to me uh, people from China directly from mm-hmm. WhatsApp. Um, I'm trying to use WhatsApp less because I, I was, WhatsApp is also have a problem with that sense of, of privacy. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm trying to keep those in the download part of it just until I feel more comfortable and until I know more about the safety of sort of my, my data. Yeah, I'm, I'm, kinda, I'm kind of in the same spot with TikTok as I am with Instagram, like I, I you know, I don't, I don't want to sound like, Hey, I'm too old, but I, I feel like I just don't quite get, I, I don't quite exactly. get it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, and I haven't, it. yeah, I haven't figured out how to utilize it to market the things in an organic way. Right. Yet. I think yeah. young for younger generation do like that because they can always post cool pictures and cool videos of them. They're still talking and then you mm-hmm. get all tons of followers. <laughs> right. 
uh, one of the child I was in in one of the rooms in Clubhouse, we we're talking about. He was talking about he want to do some YouTube videos for for uh, with his kids and everything else. I said, there you go. Your kids are 14, 15 years old. You put them in front of the camera. You can draw a whole bunch of subscribers with it like this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it, it connect with them. Me or me will be connecting with older generation, but not with the younger generation. Yeah, it's it's really weird. It's like we can still like you know the you know us older guys. We can kind of we can get on YouTube and we can kind of we can make our way. Right. You know, right. But, but like and. Uh, there, there are guys that are on TikTok, I'm sure, that are older, that are doing well. I just, I, I don't, I, I think it just comes down to like what I said earlier. We're just not spending enough time on the platform yeah. to really get anything out of it. Right. Um, right. The, you know, I, I was the same way with Reddit. Like, I didn't understand Reddit at all. Oh, I stopped but, using that. I just couldn't yeah. handle it. I, 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 it's my least favorite, but I, but I do yeah. use it. I got, I got a little bit better at interacting. And I, but I only, I have maybe, I think there's like, maybe 10 subreddits that i that i follow or post in yeah but i've i've kind of i've pulled back on it a little bit but. yeah i i can i can't figure it out i i i gave up with uh, reddit it's like this is it i just no way uh, even a friend of mine put me into a moderator or administrator for one of the rooms there in reddit I, oh okay uh, what am i gonna do uh i don't know anything about it i don't know how to make it work so i have the app still on my phone but I just done zero things with it yeah yeah, I found it's 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 very like conversational, and as soon as you you know post a link and like hey you know look at this, you get right. you get downloaded or you know the algorithm kind of shuts you out. I am um, actually using uh, another filmmaking website called Stage Thirty Two. I know Stage 30. 32. Yeah, I haven't I haven't really looked at it much in the last like year or so, but I, I was on it a few few years back. Yeah. So it seems to be good. Um, obviously, stay there too, mostly for pitching ideas to Hollywood exec. So they mm -hmm. have that more bigger uh, usage. But their their launch area where you actually chitty chatting with fil other filmmakers, um, it's not bad. I mean, I got to the point where I when I started uh, doing the full, this current movie, I started uh, vlogging about my my transition, what I was trying to do, how I was planning mm -hmm. to do everything else there. I gained a few followers and gained the people ex ex um, uh, interest. And, but you know, it's still still not Clubhouse. It's still not Facebook. It's still yeah. not working as great as I wish it would. But it's getting there better. I mean, still, I think there's more. They need more of an interaction between all the filmmakers that join up. Yeah, yeah. The 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 last time I was looking at it, it seemed like it was just a it was a lot of uh, seminars and you know exactly. uh, stuff like that. What is uh, what is next for you? Well, currently um, we put together this little photo booth book for my cast and crew to look at wow. pretty nice. that you know, is all nice. the behind the scenes stuff that we're doing so I'm, I'm hoping to be able to raise some more money that i can book get all more of this copy to all the cast and crew hopefully they can get a copy of this otherwise when we have a premiere they can show, see this on the premiere i'm uh, finishing the movie uh within the the society finish editing it i have the video completely locked down but i'm procrastinating editing the audio so um, it's it's easy. It's not hard. I just don't feel like it right now. I think thanks to Clubhouse, it got me so yeah. <laughs> it spent a little too much time on Clubhouse. I had to bring something somewhere, right? Um, and you, then you uh, pretty much you pretty much do it all yourself, like uh, post wise. Yes, because I my that's my background. I'm mostly an editor, so I know how yeah. to edit them and easy in in a sense. Uh, then we are working hopefully four more short films this year. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm taking a break from feature film just because it's uh, when you do it yourself with your own funding, you, you had to pull your hair out and you know your hair will go gray. So you have to ask your friend to dye your hair for you. This way, it doesn't look so gold. <laughs> that takes 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 a lot of energy out of me. So yeah. even though the, this one, this project was easy compared to one before, and it's a smooth sailing, but it just takes a lot of me and my energy. I'm not that young anymore. So yeah. I'd rather do some short films and then get it out there if win some words. And if somebody hired me to do a feature, great, I would do it. But if I'm doing it myself, I might just wait two, three, four years later. Right. Yeah. And I, I was going to ask that you kind of answered, but so you pretty much, uh, you, you self fund. Yes. I mostly self fund. Um, I've done crowdfunding before and did it really well. I just don't feel like the, I don't. I had. I don't have the energy and the the to go and then begging people every day. Hey, follow yeah. me here. Here, go go to my crowdfunding website. Here, support us. That's a lot of work. I mean, that's the reason why I did well before. But I just like don't. I can't do it anymore. I don't have the energy. 
I get too many things going on at the same time. I want to concentrate other stuff besides the crowdfunding. And yeah. so and then I also don't feel like going out there and ask people for money because I think it's my culture that asking people for help or asking people for money, it looks bad to me in front of them. Which doesn't make should be like that. But for, for our culture wise, especially my family background, uh, it mm-hmm. feels like we are we are too proud to be able to ask for help. That's kind of probably the best way to put it. And I, I, I kind of agree with the, your take on uh, crowdfunding. I, you know, this is what I always said. I was like, when you're crowdfunding, or when you're traditionally raising money, you go out and, you know, you pitch your investor, you know, me, maybe up to three, you know, and they, and they do it and it, and it sucks. You know, you're asking for the money, you're doing the pitch. It's the worst thing imaginable, but right. then imagine doing a crowdfunding you're basically doing the exact same thing but you're doing it over and over and over again. And you're doing it for $5 or $20, you know, and and you're putting the same effort that you would to try to get, you know, 10,000 or 15,000. Yeah. Plus the crowdfunding side, take your money away too. They take a percentage. You're not taking all the money. So working so hard to raise $3,000 and then, you know, and then they get $200 out of that. So it's like, eh, yeah. yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know there's people that use it and, you know, they, they, they like it and, you know, they use it over and over. I know a couple of filmmakers in Vegas that are, right. you know, they're basically crowdfunding movies for, you know, 200,000, 250,000. And then they're not so worried about whether the movies, you know, financially succeed or fail, you know, the, they've already, right. the, everybody's right. been paid. It's fine. You know, exactly. so like, I get, I get that, but yeah. Yeah. not for me. Yeah, it, it, that's actually a very good case where when there, you do have a name talent involved, you know, mm. obviously you can go, you raise, you can easily raise money, but still, you still had to go working so hard. One of my friends, uh, every time he make a little short film, feature film, he just um, raised money for crowdfunding. He always get over, uh, achieve over 100%. But also because he also had lots of celebrity uh, name talent from Star Trek actors that's in part of his project. And that's why he can raise that much money. Yeah. So that's how all he does. But every day I see him posting about, you know, support this project. Every day I see yeah. that. And every day I get a message from him. Would you be able to support this project and so on and so on? That's a lot of work. <laughs> it is. It that's is. Lots of work. Yeah. Um, so have you have you shot uh, one of your features like in, like in another state? Or have you always been based out of Ohio? We want to shoot in another state, just be, but we haven't got that far just because... Um, mm-hmm. Ohio has a lot of interesting places. I mean, we have four seasons here in one day. So yeah, you can have snow in the morning, then you have uh, a rainy day in the afternoon, then you have sunny day, sunny night. So that mm-hmm. happens a lot here. So we actually take advantage of what we have here. Uh, we are thinking about for the sh- the four short film doing now in this year. Uh, potentially, I want to shoot one in Vegas and New New Mexico just because a friend, a couple of my friends there, and mm-hmm. they've been asking me to say, come out and play with us. I think, like, okay, let's see how far we can go to gear to take all my gears over there and play. But that's something to think about. Right. Um, what's the what's the cruise situation like in uh in in Cleveland? Like is a is it a pretty good community? Or yes. I, I I would assume it's pretty small. Um, not that small. Um, okay. We have currently right now, I know of of at least 20 filmmakers making movies at this point right now, today. In Cleveland. In Cleveland. Wow. So that's not small. Uh, crew wise, yeah. there's a lot of talent crew. We have, we have union crew for, that works in commercials all the way to independent filmmakers crew that um, they, they always like to work with each other if they like each other and so on. So we do have very, very talented crew. It just, mm-hmm. um, unfortunately, they're all busy doing different projects at the same time. So sometimes it's hard for you to get one or two of them. The thing that we don't have that much in Cleveland would be uh, a colorist, it's been limited to the amount of color, colorists here in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. We don't have too many virtual effects uh, people. We actually do animation and 3D animation, virtu- uh, v- uh, virtual f- uh, visual effects. So those mm-hmm. are the two t- limited, limited amount of talent we have here. But the rest, plenty of DP, plenty of lighting guys, plenty of gaffers, plenty of uh, producers. Um, there's only two uh, COVID compliance officers in Cleveland right now. So, really? <laughs> yep, only two. I'm one of them. So, <laughs> <laughs> you were talking a little bit about uh, producing uh, shorts earlier. Uh, have you found ways to to monetize those, or do you do it just to just to keep making stuff? Well, a couple of ways to monetize with short film is, uh, I think, because I have already had track records of what I have done so far in the past. So when I 
why don't we do a short films? I already had three or four people telling me that, hey, I heard that you were doing your short films. I would like to give you money for it so you can make your movie. So that's one that monetize it. Second, mm -hmm. I have, because short films is easy to make, uh, a lot of different businesses were willing to provide their products for free. Mm -hmm. That's because they know me, that I know I have a track record and they know that I can produce quality projects. So they do so. So I, I, there was one guy who said, uh, sent me a message and said, I will give you a thousand dollars to be an executive producer for your short film. Like, okay, well, that's more than I thought it would happen. But, you know, so things like that can, hap can happen. And then there's also different uh, uh, short film festivals that you can run into it. And that can become a calling card for potential give you another opportunities. And then mm -hmm. lastly, there's also streaming platforms that actually accept independent short films that you yeah. can start to monetize it. Uh, there's a whole bunch. I think Indie Flix is one. There's also Twist, Flick, or Flix, Twist, something like that in from Amsterdam. So there's okay. a, a whole bunch of platform. And um, when I was talking to my sales agent and distributor, they've been telling me that there's a lot of new platform coming up. There's a new platform in Cent Central America that's all about martial art. So if you can do martial mm. films, about a short film or feature films, you'll take it. Um, and then Netflix is getting, supposedly getting an European sub, what do you call the branch going on there for, for European movies. Oh, okay, so I didn't know that. Oh, so kind of interesting how uh, I learned a lot by just talking to them. Uh, when, when it comes to distribution. Well, Johnny, um, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Um, if people want to follow you or learn more about your movies, what's the best way to keep track? Well, you can find me anywhere. You can just use uh, the the tag, uh, hashtag, um, actually not hashtag, the at sign MDI film that you can find me in YouTube, uh, Vimeo, Instagram, Facebook, anywhere. So that's the easiest and quickest way to find me. So, and I really, Jason, thank you. Really, Jason, thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk. Oh, no problem. I've, I've been wanting to chat anyway. So I, I, I basically use this as a chance to, to chat with other filmmakers and pick their brains about how they're doing their thing. And, you know, yeah. I, it, I, it's selfish. <laughs> it's, it's okay. I mean, you can also see, here's what I think I do. You go to clubhouse, meet with a bunch of different people, bring them yeah. up here and then talk to one-to-one. -one. Totally. I, that I'm, I, I'm going to do it more. I, I'm honestly, the only reason I haven't been on this week is I'm on a little bit of a deadline with okay. a documentary. If you're enjoying my channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It would seriously help me increase the frequency and the quality of these videos, but whatever you do, keep making movies.